At some point, you're going to want to be able to get information from your users. So that's where forms come in. So we have a simple form here. We have a username field, we have a data field, and we have a submit button. When we hit the submit button, it's going to send a request to our server. Our server is going to handle that request and send us back a response. So let's go ahead and run that. There we go. We hit the submit button, it sends a request to the server, it handles that request, sends us a response, and we're able to render a new web page from that request, from that response. So it says, thank you, Jane, your form data has been received. Now, Jane is a value we were able to get from the username field. So let's, let's take a look at how that works. So to display our form, we were at the path slash get form. The get form handler is just executing a template and it's serving us our parsed get form.html file. Let's go ahead and take a look at how that form gets displayed. So we have our opening form tag and we have our closing form tag. Now this last input type submit is our submit button. And we click that, it performs an action. And that action is defined here as the action attribute. Notice that this has to be inside the opening form tag. So we have our action attribute and it says, hey, go ahead and send a request at the path slash process get. So let's go back to our main.go file to see where slash process get takes us. So slash process get has its own handler and it's just going to print off a message saying, hey, uh, this handler is running. We are creating a new, we're creating a variable of type sub, which is just has two, two fields, is a username field and a data field. And we're going to be using the request data type inside the HTTP package. So let's take a look at that. As you can see, it's from right here. Now inside the HTTP, pack, HTTP package, we have our request uh, data type and it's just, it's a struct and it has different things in here. But what we want to look at are all the different methods that come with this type request. So with type request, the one we're going to be looking for here is form value. And this one's going to go ahead and return a string. So our form value is going to take, it's going to take our key string and it wants to know you know, which one of the inputs it's going to go ahead and pull data from. Now, let's go back to our getform.html. Very often, people put the same thing for ID and name, which can be all right many times, but a lot of people just don't know the difference between the two. If we're trying to get the value from a particular input, like this input, right here, we want to make sure we target the name attribute. If we wanted to use the ID attribute, uh, that's great for targeting, you know, something with CSS, JavaScript, or even associating it with, you know, a label tag. And we'll get to that here in just a bit. So anyway, this is where we get username name. I had to make sure it was different than username ID. But anyway, just to show the difference. So going back to main.go, we have username name, and we have data name. These are from the name attributes. That's where we're getting these strings. So it takes the key, it finds the value inside that particular input, and then we're just assigning it to s.data. And same thing up here with username, we're assigning to s.username field. Again, we're printing off these values, as you can see here, username Jane, and then sensitive data field was sensitive 
super sensitive data. Anyway, we're finally executing a template. This one that we're executing is the thanks, the parsed thanks.html file, and we're passing in S. So let's take a look at the thanks.html file. And this one's pretty straightforward. It's just a line of text, and we're only inputting one value, and that's going to be the username field of what we passed in, and that was Jane. So this got consumed, and it just placed Jane there and said, Thank you, Jane. Your form data has been received. As, as you can see here. Now let's let's go back to our form again and look at this uh, a few other different things we haven't quite covered yet on it. We have our our get form. Now one thing to notice is we have these these labels here. This one I purposely didn't use a label so you could see the difference. And the point of the label is it's going to help your user target an element. So it's a little bit easier to show. So if I click on username, it should target this field. There you go. My cursor ends up just in front of Jane. Now on the other hand, I didn't use a label for this text right here, uh, sensitive data, to label this field. You can do it this way, but it's not going to help your users target that field as easy. So if I click on that, it's not going to put my cursor in front of super. But if I click on username, there I go. It's going to help me target that field. And like I was saying, we have a ID field in our first input. So this is the input uh, for username. And we've given, you know, it's of type text. So it's just a little box we can put text into. And we have an ID attribute and we have a name attribute. Remember, like I said, the name attribute is for grabbing the value in our code. Um, the value attribute is just the starting value inside our form. Notice I didn't have to type anything in there. It already said Jane. So value is just going to give you your starting value. But going back to ID, this is really good for, say, targeting with CSS. So anyway, we have some. CSS right up here, and it's going to go ahead and target data ID. So this particular input is being targeted by the ID attribute, and when we start this back up, it should change the background color of that input to, to green, a shade of green. There we go. So this particular input had its CSS uh, changed. So back to the code. Let's go ahead and change that back. And like I said, the ID is also good for targeting with uh, JavaScript as well. So uh, down here at the bottom, if you notice on our our form here, we have a little button here, and on that button click, so it says on click, and we're going to change the inner HTML. So document dot get element by ID of demo, and as you can see, here's our, you know, the text that said empty is inside a uh, paragraph that said with the ID of demo. So we're going to change the inner HTML of that to what we get at document dot get element by ID data ID. So it's going to find the input of data ID and it's going to grab this value and change that uh, on our form. So like I said, when I click this, it's going to go ahead and grab the data from that and it's going to go ahead and put it down to the bottom. There we go. Super sensitive data. And and finally, the other thing that ID is good for is for our label. Now for our label, 
we're going to use our for attribute and it needs to know what input field this is for so we're going to we're going to target the id field which is username id so if i didn't have the correct one let's say if it was pointing to data id when i clicked on this label it would take me to that one so i mean simply being that this this label is pointing to the id of this input when i click on it it just brings me to that to the start of that field and let's see here is that everything uh, one thing also to notice with this action it's that slash process and it's on method get so whenever we so whenever we use a get request it's going to put information up in the url so i'm going to go ahead and hit hit submit and here's the information we passed in there so this is where we find our data so looking at an example our start the start of our parameters we have a question mark and then we're going to have key value pairs for instance in this example we have a color equal sign and then our value is blue now we can have several several different parameters and we're just going to separate those with the ampersand so there here again we have another key which is sort equal sign and our value is newest so back to our example we have our question mark here saying hey now we're starting into our parameters and i have username name which is equal to so that one is our key and then jane would be our value ampersand we have another key value pair key for the first for this uh, pair is data name and it's equal to and here's our data super sensitive data Now, one thing uh, to take note of is at this process get, uh, slash process get path, and we're running this process get handler, there is no code in here that stops me from making my own get request. If you wanted to make sure this had to be a post, you can put code in here, say, hey, only accept uh, post request or with method type post. But since that's not in there, if I really wanted to, I don't even have to use the submit button. I could just put in my own process get and it would work. You know, notice that it doesn't put in the name here because I didn't give it any parameters. But let's say I have this and I typed in my own parameters. Let's put in John. Being there's nothing in the code to stop me from sending my own uh, get request. Now, if, you, if you're going somewhere in the browser, um, default, it's just going to be a get request. As you can see, thank you, John. Your form data has been received. So we basically did the same thing as that form by putting in our own own parameters as you can there we go as you can see here it's a get request and if I use the submit button it's also a get request all right well I hope that was helpful if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one.